Thank you. So about Evo Research, uh, we are a small company which started about uh, 13 months ago, um, our team, but our team has 10 years plus experience working in this space. Um, we have 23 development partners with whom we worked the last 12 months on uh, developing a portfolio analysis and planning solution for science funders. Most of them are science funders. Uh, and we just released last Friday um, the first commercially available version of this one. And our active members of standards and data initiatives, for example, Kesri, ORCID, and we have Laurie uh, speaking to Maury, Crossdrive and Fundrive. Uh, and we are part of the digital science family uh, of uh, small uh, technology companies uh, working in the area of supporting science. Digital science is the youngest sibling of the Nature Publishing Group which is owned by Macmillan Publishers. Small and big data solutions to support science funders. So where is science funding happening? It happens on various levels. So you have supranational funders uh, like the WHO, the European Union, and others. You have the national level, so the national research councils, which might be even uh, specific for uh, different areas of science. Uh, charity organizations, and corporate R&D. So a lot of players, a lot of grants, a lot of data being generated. And if you then look at the science system, just taking two pictures uh, to illustrate, um, science is not happening in silos. This is a visualization from Saimago where they are looking at the different geographical region, regions and how they collaborate. And you can clearly see that the color areas are not separated from each other but overlapping, which means on an institutional level, a fact which we all know, there is collaboration happening internationally. And it is also happening on a personal level. These are just 8,500 8, physicians publishing on one concept, and these are the relations amongst them. One concept, 8,500, just imagine the millions of researchers and the number of concepts, what type of connected community that is in the end. So, but, Science funders are funding projects. So that is the earliest point in time where something becomes public about which research is going to be done. And these uh, supranational funders are having perhaps three to 15 databases in which this information ends up. The national funders have much more databases in which the information about the research which is going to be carried out is ending up. And if you think of all the foundations and charities, uh, that's even worse. We are leaving the corporate R&D, which is a black box, uh, at the side for the moment, but of course there's also happening a lot. But this is the area in which we are interested in. And I will explain why in a second. But all the players are interested what the others are doing, but there's no means for them to systematically analyze and tap into in that information. So interest is there, and why is interest there? So if you look for a second at the transmission timeline from a, scientific, from a researcher having an idea to having impact in a way, so there's the idea, then he writes a grant application. The publisher might or might not award, we assume for a second that he's awarding this grant. Then the researcher will do research, will attend conferences, he will present the preliminary results, and then he will publish. And at some point, the citations for a publication will pick up. Let's look a second at the time frames. From grant to publication could be one to five years depending on the type of research. Citations being at the point where it makes sense to analyze them and take them into account is three to two years normally. So, which means that between grant and publication, we talk about three to eight years. And why is that important? Because the citation data is currently driving the decisions of what should be funded or not to a large extent. Does that really make sense? Probably yes to a certain extent, but not as the primary source of information. So what we have been doing is to focus on exactly this point. And we started to aggregate something which is unfortunately not publicly available yet a global database of awarded grants from various publishers in order to allow various players in the process to tap into the information where 
scientific review officers, experts have made decisions to bet on a certain area of research and a certain proposal. So we currently have uh, portfolios from 60 funders with more than 1.3 million grants and growing, uh, which cover more than 600 billion of funding, from which 166 are going to happen in the future starting 2015. So this is about resources which are going to be spent on actual projects uh, in the future. So a database which covers what's going to happen, which might be of interest in some cases. It's open for funders to join and, and uh, benefit both from the analytical capabilities, but we also make it available uh, for the entire scientific community in specific use cases. So for example, we build a small wizard which allows researchers to assign their awarded grants to their ORCID record so that it's better reflected uh, uh, in that system. Just a few examples why it's important to know what is happening. Imagine the European Union is setting up a project called, a small project called Horizon 2020. 28 projects are going to fund in the next years 80 billion on research together. They put it in one pot and then are going, they are going to distribute it. In addition to the funding which is happening on a national level. But there's no database which is covering the 29 historic portfolios of what has been funded in the past, what is currently going on, to allow the alignment of EU funding and national funding. Uh, and as a taxpayer in Germany, I find this slightly disturbing. Then if you look at a grant, a grant proposal from one researcher being reviewed, as a scientific reviewer, so I would be interested in knowing whether this is an isolated project at the institution or whether it actually has a certain background, a continent of research in which it fits in nicely, so that even a smaller amount can have a larger effect. But also, that requires, the information is there, but it requires a person to go to various places. <clears throat> so what did we do? We started to aggregate the data, and then we recognized as well why that such a database didn't exist. Data cleansing, data creation, data uh, model mapping, uh, institution disambiguation across the different sources, person disambiguation, things we are working on since 10 years, but still it was hard work to get to a reasonable data quality. Then we built a functional layer on top of it because data is not uh, useful in itself. Uh, it needs to be analyzed. So uh, natural language processing um, in order to tap into the documents, clustering and topic, topic modeling um, in the, uh, in, Funders love to use research classification systems, and in not a few cases, they are still assigning those tags to documents manually, a very expensive and not very efficient way. So dealing with ways how to do this automatically uh, has been a great focus from, uh, for us uh, in the last uh, month. Then building search and analysis application on top of it, visualization, and most importantly, provide this as APIs. But since we started the company after having built these kind of analytical tools for large funders in very expensive projects for more than 10 years, we started uh, the company in order to allow also smaller and very small funders to tap into the same intelligence. So what we did is we implemented this as a cloud-based solution, which has since Friday even the name, Dimensions, uh, as a product with which small funders can just use at a uh, at yeah, marginal costs, but we still allow others to actually tap into the APIs and build their own applications, leveraging the data uh, and uh, the analytical capabilities um, which we build into it. And just a few examples, um, very simple ones, because um, uh, if you, the, the title of the presentation is Small and Big Data Solutions. Um, it's basically the database is can, you can consider it to be big data, but it's mostly the small solutions which are helping to solve the everyday challenges of people, for example, processing grant applications. It's not necessarily being able to detect what the trend in the next five years is based on computational routines, that is nice, but sometimes the challenges uh, are much more down to the ground. And let's pick uh, a few examples which I was able to pull up uh, in a few minutes. So we all uh, are uh, familiar with ALS and what has happening over the last 
um, a few weeks. But the question is right now, right now, what is going to happen with these 100 million? What should be done in order to invest this in a way? Because we cannot expect that everybody is uh, donating the same amount next year. So it will be a one-time effect, at least to a certain extent. And it's a tricky situation, which is comparable to the ERA funding um, uh, from the US government a couple of years ago, because it can cause negative effects. Short-term boost, um, uh, research projects take longer than one year normally. So do you bolt on to, uh, to other projects? So what are you going to do? Because the public is expecting now that something is happening. So just typing in a very basic query, it shows me immediately uh, what is currently going on. Approximately 1,000 projects are currently 1 billion going into research on this disease with approximately 1 million as an average funding amount uh, for the project. If I look at the graph, I see that uh, it has been uh, uh, rising similar to the overall research funding, um, uh, which I know, and the uh, active projects is the green line, starting projects is the blue line. So, um, and if we then look at the average funding amount, it becomes clear that the annual average funding amount is currently around 1 million. So this year, or in the next month, um, the double amount can be spent. And who is actually funding it? So based on the uh, data which we aggregated, you can get a clear picture who has been uh, funding research in this area, perhaps to think about how to not isolate in an isolated way fund research right now, but set up cooperations between funders in order to coordinate in an area of research like ALS. Or you can, within seconds, tap into who, which funder has been funding which research organization with which amount over the last uh, years in order to understand where the money has been going. So for example, Johns Hopkins received 34 grants relevant to the query which we entered in, which uh, approximately 50 million and 1.4 million per project. Uh, if we look into the researchers um, uh, who have been receiving uh, these funds, then we can tap in immediately into and analyze what type of research has been done. So for example, if you look at Jeffrey, he has 10 to projects in total, uh, out of which I think four, if I remember correctly, are relevant uh, to ALS, but we get an impression immediately what he's doing in order to perhaps even assess his proposal. But now the question is what to do with it. And uh, forgive me, I'm only a medical doctor, so the example is relatively simple and not going into the genetic causes of the disease. But um, assistive technology is of interest for ALS patients. And perhaps it's a good area to invest part of the money going forward because it yields immediate effect. And you might be even able to tap into developments which are happening elsewhere. So currently, 13 projects are dealing with the topic of assistive technology and ALS. But more than 680 with uh, overall. And if I'm a, um, a program officer being tasked to get rid of a part of the 100 million in a useful way, uh, I could do a very quick analysis and what type of assistive technologies are not uh, being researched or developed on with ALS and try to tap into those in order to perhaps even approach people uh, to go uh, and uh, apply what they have done uh, in a way that it fits for the uh, ALS uh, patients. Just as, a, and that's what I meant with simple data solutions, nothing else than a search application with, a, uh, uh, with some intelligence and natural language processing behind it, but it allows me to very flexibly query it and make it and create supporting insights for decisions which have to be made and which have to be defendable. Other things are, of course, trying to uh, understand better the portfolio of a, of a science funder. Um, so what we did um, uh, and submitted in a contest of the British Library, uh, which we won, is to create visual representations of uh, portfolios based on research classification. So what you see here is the overall amount of funding um, uh, with uh, categories used from the NIH for reporting. And the size of the bubble shows the amount of projects and money, and the relation is how related these are in terms of uh, the analysis of the documents. But you can then highlight one, for example, rural health, and it tells you then per funder what type of importance and which topics are in the area of rural health connected um, uh, with this funder. 
to allow to, to support very specific analyses uh, and uh, 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 with visual impressions. Last but not least, a more practical example. Uh, every science funder has the challenge that um, oh, in every decision for a grant, the community is involved by uh, uh, the means of peer review. So peer reviewers have to be identified in order to support making the decisions which project should be funded. And the hard work is actually finding peer reviewers who have the right expertise um, and no conflicts of interest. So by tapping into the database, which we, that was not a peer reviewer, uh, by tapping into the uh, database, um, uh, we analyzed the automatically the grant ap uh, application which comes in and flows into the system automatically and then we suggest immediately the best matching peer reviewers um, based on both their grants and publications and we compute potential conflicts of interest based on co-author relation, based on institutional affiliation or uh, co-funding with the same uh, uh, publisher and allowing so the uh, funding agency to bring down the time uh, to identify reviewers but also increase the quality of the match between an application and a reviewer by tapping into much more information sources than a human being would be able by only uh, using a search uh, application. These were three very simple examples, not the ones where we're looking at trends um, which uh, uh, require more than 20 minutes. Since I unfortunately have to leave this evening due to a family emergency, I would like to point to my co-founder Ashley Hicks, who's also in the audience. So if you have questions tomorrow, I will be here today, the entire day, this is the guy to go to. <laughs> Thank you very much.